I'd like to call this work session of the Southampton Town Board to order on this 21st day of November 2019. Please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Come on in, Jim. All right, Sunday, would you call the roll? Certainly. Supervisor Schneiderman? Here. Councilman Lofstad? Here. Councilman Scalera? Here. Councilman Bouvier? Here. Councilman Steve Present. All right, new tablecloth. Perfect. All right, um, we're going to start today with a, a presentation regarding Flying Point Beach renovation. We are joined by Kristen Dulos, our town. Town Parks Director and Matt Jedlicka from McLean Associates. So let me invite you guys forward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Kristen, are you kicking this off? Sure. Um, so we had a very wonderful and beautiful renovation of Hong Kong Beach this past year. Um, one thing that we've been focused on this past few years is um, trying to address a lot of our infrastructure, uh, particularly at our beaches. We know how important they are to our economy and to the enjoyment of our uh, residents and visitors. So um, we're looking east of the canal this coming year at Flying Point Beach, which <coughs> is located in uh, Watermill. Um, it's currently in very poor condition, um, particularly the walkover to the beach is not ADA compliant, uh, nor is are the bathrooms or the ramp. So um, during this project, those are uh, you know the main items that we really wanted to address, but we would also like to do residing, new roofing, um, a new layout of the bathrooms, a new lifeguard area. Um, and we would like to install an advanced wastewater system. So we do show on the, uh, the first page that you have. <coughs> There's a, uh, in the western portion of the parking lot, that's where the um, IA system would go. It's uh, sized. Right now it's just a schematic design size to accommodate all the parking stalls that are in the entire uh, facility. Uh, 3,800 gallons of uh, storage is two Fuji clean systems piggyback side by side. Okay, great. <laughs> and we figured that we haven't done any soil borings there yet um, for the design of it, but we assume that groundwater is very high. And so the leaching, what we decided was the Coltec chambers, mm -hmm. those are those plastic. And actually, down at the Shinnecock Commercial Fishing Docks, that was one of the first systems. It's not an IA system. But it does have that those leaching Coltec chambers that are just a finger. Of yeah, a the, those are the same ones at Tiana too, aren't they? At uh, Tiana Basin. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure. Okay. How is this going to affect the the number of parking stalls? Are we going to continue having the western portion of the parking lot? Or? We yes. So, where the system itself would be. Um, what can be done is there can be a traffic bearing concrete slab that's installed over the actual system with manhole covers so that you can access the units to service them. And we might lose one spot up adjacent to the building, but then all those Coltec chambers, they, they're all traffic bearing as far as the installation, you know, the design of that. Okay. You'd have to have it a certain depth below the pavement, but the plan would be to uh, redo that section of the parking lot, Re then then restripe the entire parking lot. We may be able to capture a couple of stalls with a redesign. Maybe you might lose. You might stall lose. Okay, two. one or two. I mean, right now. And that's the, where the Fuji system is. We're going to have to put Fuji bollards around. Where the Fuji system is, yeah. Okay. Right now, I mean, it seems like it's it's maxed out as far as the parking. Um, the aerial that I. I brought with me doesn't have the northern parking section. There's a wedge that the town's been using uh, for parking. And then there's also parking along Flying Point Road. Um, so okay. we can't gain any parking. Um, and the thought is you, you might lose one spot. So okay. So is this, a, this is currently a capital project? Is, yep. Do we have this funded? It's an established capital project. It's funded um, using park reserve monies. Okay. 
Okay, and how much is in the park reserve in that area? Um, approximately 950000 was put towards this project. I believe there's a balance in that park reserve still of a few and hundred thousand dollars. And are you estimating for all these things? Uh, we, uh, we, well, excluding the sanitary, so for the building and the... Because right, you're assuming CPF will pay for the sanitary, which we'll, I'll get to in a second, but... Yes. So yes. Minus, minus the sanitary, we were at seven hundred fifty to eight hundred thousand. So within the budgeted, right? The mill. Can I can I just a little bit about this project? So you basically you're eliminating the overhang and you're making the bathrooms more spacious because this right. building is just bathrooms. So right, it's yes. like storage for lifeguards. Just and bathrooms. This is the current lifeguard office. <laughs> right. So, so that would be a little bit bigger. Yeah. So on the second sheet, there's a, uh, the, the old floor plan on the left. It's, the layout is poor. The handicapped accessibility is non-compliant. Um, and what the plan was, was to basically with the renovation, to push the walls out to, to the edge of the roof, to the structure, to the posts that are holding up the roof. And yeah, I see that. It'll be a little overhang? Couple inches. So it'll be a few inches, maybe an eight inch overhang. So if we bring the walls out to where the posts are right now that are holding up the structure of the roof, um, you wind up going from like just under 400 square feet of bathroom and lifeguard area to over 700. So it's a significant increase and you're losing on the eastern side, there's a really narrow section of deck where there's a shower that's, you know, just, it's, and that's why, in... Why so expensive, though? I didn't though. know it was there. Yeah. 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 It's in the, it's uses in the it. yeah. Why so, I mean, it's a minor expansion to an existing building. Why $700,000? <coughs> it's, well, it's why because that, based on, well, based on our experiences at Pop Up, we're anticipating rebuilding pretty much all of the wall space around it leaving the roof as is all yeah, new like a deck and deck. Well, the house for us in this one. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. But in this case, you know, being a you know prevailing wage project, um, that just sounds wrong. So I don't know. And then there's a lot going into the decking. The decking I think is hundred and fifty thousand, something like but that. It's all EPA is that what all EPA, there's a there's an area off to the west that would be like a shower platform with so a, that's with a new? nice trellis. All so we don't all have that showers now. Just the one that was located on the west side. So we would that have showers? Okay. Is that well? It's it's not well water. It's not county water, right? The Europe, right? Yeah. yeah. Why? I mean, if this is largely ADA. Why aren't we putting handicap spaces here and having a short walk onto the beach? Why do we? But we need so this. So we're not thing. doing. The dune crossover is not going to be, it's not going to be ADA to cross over there. The so this the is an ADA anyway? That's not. It's so ADA we, I mean, to do we the shower need that? Why area. Can, why don't we just let people go walk this way? Why do you even need that dune crossover? Well, that's where the existing dune crossover is. I understand right. that, but why is that necessary? From the bathroom. It's because we'll be a long Yeah, that's how you get to the restrooms. The restrooms are going to be located on this side. Now in the lifeguard station. Perhaps so it's it's it also this is a very high elevation here. This dune people like to walk up. They yeah. stand up top. They yeah. overlook the bay and the ocean. Um, and I don't so know. Like advantage pool. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I it matters um, as far as you know how you access the beach with the roadway versus the actual property because the property line is on the eastern side kind of encompasses the one row of parking but then the rest of it is you know town road um so i don't you know i the, don't know this if pa this park was i know this park was our money can only be used in a certain area is this the project that you deem most important within the area that the park reserve money is coming from yeah i think so yeah okay the other thing is it's just I, know Alex, I know you can't spend this money at tiana but yeah. That pavilion is needs to be moved back or something. Oh, yes. We have real issues with Tiana Pavilion. Mm -hmm. It's being undermined by the you know these these fall storms. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that's going to be a much bigger project. Sliding that's it yeah, back. That's a big project. Um, I, I have some structural questions. So, um, but but just getting back for one second. So this yeah. is 
what you think the park reserve money ought to be spent on. Yes. Okay. I mean, just looking for ways to maybe lower the cost, but. Well, the other thing is it's only, you know, our engineer's budgetary estimate. I mean, until it comes in at bid date, you know, it's hard to really determine exactly what the number is. We it just seems like a relatively minor project and the cost seems really very high. Well, it's a, the, when I was estimating it, it was figuring a rebuild, an entire rebuild of the 720 square feet. Oh, so you tear right? it down and so start again? Yeah, we, we're going to try to save the roof so we don't have to rebuild the roof, but... Um, well, if you got to rebuild the roof, then you can restore an overhang, too, but then you're getting a bigger footprint. Right, a bigger footprint. Um, the there's the money that we anticipated to spend on shoring up some of the foundation. You know, there's going to be... Have you looked at a prefab, like you've done with some of the bathrooms? No. This is a bathroom, but other bathrooms. So that if we were to do a prefab for that you'd have to just demolish the entire thing yeah we'd have to pay for it well, looking at the <coughs> rock it might not be a bad idea to demolish it and then bring in um but we're uh, we're really demolishing just about everything we're not saving we're you know probably selectively replacing certain posts all the decking would be removed so is it really cost effective to try to save a roof if we're going to be taking down the structure Chances are we're going to be putting a new roof on it. You got to after this anyway. and Well, right, we're redoing when it's said the done, we're be and that stuff, and building we're a new roof. Trying to save some of the framing. Um, you know, what does it sit on? It sits on pilings, or what is it? That actually that sits question. on um, concrete block piers. Okay. So Have we inspected those? There's been an inspection. Um, there's an in anticipated um, replacement of some of that. So and is that included in the? Mm -hmm. the budget yeah. and the under framing I'm assuming that this structure is going to be built on existing framing has that been inspected yeah but that's probably going to get replaced and is that part of the budget as yes. well so yeah. a lot of the money is going on a lot of the money the structure. is 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 you know mm -hmm. th without ripping the entire thing out and just building a new comfort station there it's it's you know 80 percent of that have you explored the modular because you know you're building a wood frame structure in a marine environment it's going to be exposed to wind and salt air and some of the bathrooms we just did one at uh sys area um, mm -hmm. at, at the north sea park and then we did one um, at good ground park and i think they came out pretty well and don't they gonna last forever. I mean, they could be there a long time. Yeah. Like, this is going to be exposed to the elements. Have you l looked at that? I mean, it sounds like it could save a few hundred thousand dollars. We yeah. have not. We had just looked at this as a renovation project. So um, we haven't, but I don't we, know. I mean, I was involved in the one at Good Ground Park as far as the foundation system. In this particular case, what we would do is just demolish everything, pile foundation and then put the building on a uh, oh, yeah. foundation. So it doesn't s lend itself as well to a masonry building because of that? Or? Uh, no, we, we did actually after after Superstorm Standy, we did a uh, Islip Beach, the town of Islip. Um, we did a, a pavilion that is basically the same size as Pompog, all with precast concrete buildings on a uh, a green hard pile foundation so you system, can do yeah, and and there's ways to tie it down. The hurricane um, straps. I, I yeah, there's well. There's I bet there's prefab wood buildings too, not just masonry mm -hmm. buildings that could lower the cost. <coughs> so the stick building it. Just looking quickly at the estimate, the the building itself, building reconstruction, I had about four hundred thousand, and I think. So the rest of it's that group. You pay? Well, it's. You know, foundation repair, fifty plus thousand um, dollars. Electric, you know, redoing the electric is I don't know twenty thousand dollars, and all that stuff starts to add up. Um, Are you using a special for the pilings? That green, whatever that's the green called. Heart, yeah, if green heart. Any that's its piling replacement. Yeah. yeah, but that stuff. Uh, how about for the forever. the new shower facilities? Will that be on the concrete or on piles? That would be on piles. Mm -hmm with the deck and similar to the last page I, I threw in a photo of the shower that's over at Pompog. So the idea was a trellis and freestanding showers on a on a deck. That was, that was the idea. I mean this is all schematic design. 
You're also rebuilding the attendant booth. Is that part of the project? Yes. And then, and then I saw some trellis. This is in a rendering, or is that already there? So that is punk fog. So this I trellis is punk fog. That's punk fog, but it's it's flying point is sort of set up the same way, or the proposed. But that's not the same part. Way. This trellis is not part of the project. No, it would be. It would be. Is yeah. that is that really needed? Is that well, if the attendants are sitting out there, it, they need some a, sort of shade. That's not really shade, though, right? It does provide a decent. It's not too shade, right? The sun goes through the between oh, the it spaces. Does. It's more of an aesthetic element. Mm. They use it for shade. You should be able to maybe put some fabric over it, or you should make it brighter. It looks more like an architectural element than a real true shade. Some shade, I guess. They do look nice. You get burned. You get well, if you if you if you, you get partially burned, <laughs> put it so that they're facing east west and the sun's coming from the south and it's you know it, it just, the more, shade will stack know. through so it, it there's a lot of shade okay. that they do provide. Yeah, if the sun is low enough. If the sun is low enough, I mean, if it's directly overhead, forget it. Oh, you can, uh, sun sails, or something that could go there. Yeah, something like that. I mean, could. Or the, you know, a, 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 you know, concrete pedestal where you could just bring out an umbrella and set it in. But right. I mean, how much does that add to the cost? That trellis. The trellis. I mean, that we <laughs> estimated the entire that area. To be about twenty-five thousand dollars, which is a little bit under what um, including the trellis was. and the Inclu including the attendant booth? booth and the trellis. So it's not and brand like new; it's just refurbishment. No, that would be all new. And all so an Rip all new attendant booth and trellis for twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Because it's that just a shed. That seems okay, That's right? Like Cost-wise, I just the uh, seven hundred thousand dollar price tag for the without the sanitary system. You know, the sanitary system, and I'm not going to argue about do, doing an IA system, but in terms of IA systems, you know, what we're protecting is nitrogen from the ocean. You know, normally I think of the priorities being the inner bays and harbors and wetlands and things like that. The, it's not that, you know, the ocean shouldn't be protected from nitrogen too, but it doesn't have a nitrogen <coughs> issue in the ocean. We well, also have the bay is right. Right. essentially yeah, right, right here. Yeah. yeah, but the water flow water, is this The watershed is going the water this, way, is this way towards right. the ocean. And so you should always look at the watershed, subwatershed study over there. You know, so we don't know what the cost is for this, uh, but it, it, if we're going to prioritize our spending for IA systems, this probably wouldn't be one of the top priorities. We'd probably go where there was flow toward a harbor bay. Well, it is um, it we is designated a as a problem. high priority yeah. area by CPF. That's because of the distance to the water. It's just that the ocean is a saltwater body, and um, that chlorine ion in the ocean tends to remove the nitrogen on its own. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I had a, a couple questions about that uh, the placement of it. Um, it's high, um, and I don't know what the uh, capacity is. You know, Article Six is changing to thirty thousand gallons. That's something that considers individual, uh, you know, systems in series as opposed to a whole up system. I don't know what the usage is here, what the attendance is, what what the estimated flow rate. Well, might it was, be. it was designed for the um, full capacity of the parking lot, so 218 stalls or whatever, and Suffolk County is requiring 15 gallons per day per stall, and so based on that, it was third. Uh, uh, what was it? The capacity of the system is 3,800. The required size is 3,270. Okay, so this um, is uphill. There's gonna. It's not a gravity-fed system, or this has to be put down in order to keep keep level with. with as the, far as the leaching, yeah. Out of no, as far as actually connecting to it from well, here under. Yeah. So yeah. if you look, it's because initially we were thinking that it was it was going to be under a, a new phase. We didn't really, uh, when, when we added it in as far as line work, so it's a little bit difficult to see on the plan, but right next to the ramp, that's where the, that's where the two tanks are. Okay. So they're right there, and then from there, um, the effluent would go to distribution pools that would then 
go into those Right, so it has to be set figures. at a grade in order to be gravity fed, is mm -hmm. my point. I don't know what the topography is here, so it's just something that's just This is all shallow flat, leaching field right under the parking very lot? Very shallow leaching field, yes. Under the parking lot? Mm -hmm. And is it a, it's an asphalt parking lot? Asphalt parking lot, yes. And so it's just sort of a gravity then. And, and we're talking about a pretty serious cement slab underneath the asphalt or on top only, of it for part of the year on the, the leaching field. Not for the leaching no. field. So the leach, the, the, those leaching the chambers, um, as long as you weight. have a certain depth below where the, you know, the load can dissipate mm -hmm. their traffic bearing on their okay. own. The Fujiclean um, IA system They'll get the would pad. be the one with the pad over top of it to protect that from anybody driving on top of that. But the Coltec, so at the commercial fishing docks in Shinnecock, those have, I think there might be five rows of the same exact thing that we're proposing here. It's been there since 2004. Um, the septic tank is a, is a traditional septic tank, but then it goes to a distribution pool with five pipes that come out and, and there are trucks that go in there and there's everybody driving mm -hmm. through there and so you said the sanitary system wasn't included in that seven hundred thousand dollar price and i have to ask you because of the way it's designed is the reconstruction of the parking lot included in the price not in the 700 no and is that something that can be paid for through the cpf i don't, I know. don't know that the reconstruction of the parking lot could be i think so most everything else could be because you're basically ripping up the large section of the parking lot yeah, as, as Matt was saying, we initially were considering this as a two-phase project um, with the sanitary being phase two, but in terms of permitting um, and timing for the project, it seemed to make sense to just put it all into one permit other than finishing phase one and then immediately like, revising. Well, we would have to know because that it could be a couple hundred thousand dollars to put that parking lot back together. Mm -hmm. That's why this is sort of the conceptual um, design discussion so that we could figure out pre, how we're... Have you had a pre-meeting with CBF Water Quality Board? I, I did speak with um, Janice Shearer. I didn't okay. meet with the board. And yeah, because there's a, there, would be, there would be, you know, there could be some cost issues. That, I mean, as far as availability of funds, we're, we're reaching, uh, you know, sort of a, we're reaching the height of our infrastructure availability. So it would be, have to be encumbered over time. So the phasing is a perfect yeah. solution for that, you know, but probably two years. You could least. start this with this the current sanitary system that's there? We could. We would just, yeah. That's what I would sort of recommend and <coughs> then go. We have to find out whether CPF could cover cover the reconstruction of the parking area because that's not part of that. We currently have reserve. over, we have about 900000 in this project fund. Uh, y and you want to use all of it on this project? I'm just saying if we were to do the sanitary there is money there for the you for the parking lot, so or, you know. or in some com combination with CPF, mm -hmm. should they accept it? Cause I you do know that they'll pay board. for like design and borings and maintenance contracts and the actual work. So there's quite a bit that they will cover. As far as the parking area, I didn't ask that specifically. Okay. I don't. And we so can we can pull back. Any on conditions some of on the, the uh, park reserve fund in terms of how it can be spent? Um, no, not too many. Just you know that it has so to. So it be. could be for redoing the parking lot, and then. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, that could definitely be. So can I just clarify the nine fifty that you um, were proposing to use as park reserve that doesn't include the I proposed IA system or the parking lot? No, it but could. right it now we're estimating right. it cost the cost to come in at about seven fifty for okay. the project, um, and then there would also be you know construction inspection fees and stuff. So, but there would still be. So well, let me understand this. So the current system that's existing here, um, it, do I understand that this it's septic ring system is sitting here at, uh, roughly in this mm -hmm. area? Yes. So if, if you do the rebuild and you do this as a secondary phase, you're going to have the connections coming. At, you're going to have to go so up. You come down underneath the, since it's a raised building, it's nice because it's easily accessible, but the final drop would be out of the out of the floor and then it would first get piped to the east but then under the second phase you would you know cut that where it drops down and just repipe it and head the other way right and then so that's what i'm just saying you know, there's no it doesn't sound like there's a huge uh, no. additional cost in phasing that no, because I of the mean, location with municipal wix law pricing 
maybe it's two thousand dollars worth of work okay. to have somebody in there doing to phase that, it for that to, portion to, to do that you know repiping portion and this is a ring system not a old cesspool or anything no, like that. that's okay. an old, uh, old can i ask Kristen again as you know mm -hmm. with you as parks director we don't like some of the parks reserve funds have like no money in it mm -hmm. this one has nine hundred thousand almost a million dollars that's it actually th yeah there's still some in that account as well um Old Park District versus Park Reserve. This is Park... Park Reserve. This is Park Reserve. Mm -hmm. um, so in this Park Reserve area, um, what are some of the other town parks that we have? Well, Meacox Bay Park was the one that we did about a year or two ago where we put the new sailing shed. That was paid for out of that reserve account. Okay. We also have Scott Cameron and uh, Meacox Beach. The fall and we're going to do the bathroom. bathroom. We're going to redo some of the internal on that bathroom, but we're doing that in-house. We were going to do in-house, yeah. yeah. Those, are, um, those aren't really pavilion structures. They're just yeah. set um, like you on the ground Away from the and no decking or pavilion right. or anything like that. And Meacox, is there any needs there? Just like we were saying, some internal um, maintenance work we were going to do bathroom. on them in-house to, you know, kind of renovate them. And any Get other that's better. it though in terms of parks and this is what the reserve fund it's, um, it's um it's it's yeah it's um so I, don't have, I don't have that map yeah. with me but yeah it's watermill not bridge it it, it, it comes to parts, parts of bridge it's too, a yeah. fund though that's not replenishing very quickly because it's a it's based on subdivisions right. and we're seeing less and less subdivisions now so mm -hmm. so uh, i just want to make sure that this is the highest priority because it doesn't sound like it sounds like all of that reserve will go into this uh, this beach at Flying Point. Maybe this is the one that is you know most uh, where it's most needed. Is this structure being built with Hardy Plank? Yeah. Um, um, well, that was EPay. I mean, in other words, it's built to last. The thought was to keep to time. kind of try to standardize a look mm -hmm. um, similar to Ponquags, and yes, to go with the EPay um, and the Hardy Plank siding. Looks nice. Yeah. yeah. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Keep a consistent look and material. I, I think in the long run, it, you know, it's a, it's it's a, a lowering in the maintenance costs, and over the long term, it lasts longer. So you know, you can extrapolate from that. That it, I I think the goal is worthy, definitely. I, I I do. You know, I'd like to revisit the cost because it does. You know, understand that better. At least there's a better breakdown. What, what about Rick? Oh, you like the view here, right? I was going to say maybe if it, we're going to have to build a brand new structure, maybe if we built it over here, then we'd have better ADA access. This is a town highway road. Okay. Uh, even though it's within the parking lot of the park. It's not really within the parking lot. We just have road end parking uh, by permit there. What about siding it in this corner here? I don't. I don't know well, you did you <laughs> didn't you guys say that this really isn't ADA? The crossover is not. Yes. So the ADA aspect is to get into the bathroom and to be able to use the showers. And well, explain that to know. me. So you're basically, I don't know, what's this blue thing? Is that that's, matting? That's the matting, matting that gets put out. At right now, it's beaches. covered with sand to approximately up here. Is that matting here? supposed to be for wheelchairs or is it for yeah, everybody? It's for everybody. And everybody. then you go here, you can't bring a wheelchair up there? You can't because there's... Uh, Two series of stairs because of it because it's. I mean, if we try to make it ADA accessible, just the height of the top of the dune relative to the parking lot, we would have. So, so, so I'm, right I'm right going to walk or I'm going to I'm in a wheelchair and now. I want to go from the beach to the bathroom. I actually have to go this way. Yes, which is the way it's set up now, anyway. So so we wouldn't it be better to just put the pavilion here and have a, the matting here? And you know, just walk along here to get in. Maybe we pull these. I don't know if we can reposition them at all. Create a walkway right along this edge. And then rip this out completely. Yeah, get rid of it and then come up this way. Well, then you're you are that? adding additional cost because you have. No, we're now saving. We're probably well, saving four hundred thousand no, dollars. because you also have to go much farther to the current site of the uh, of the IA system in the future. Do you think they I mean, would if you made this eye this way, because it's behind the primary dune. Um, where, where is the sure current septic system? Right here. It to the it's east? to the okay. right or to the east. Got it. The east of it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's right west. here. The current one is the current one is right oh, in that yeah. area. Right oh, it's right. in here. Yeah. So, so actually, it might be better. Use the same system. 
Well, I mean, can you look, can you look at doing that, like a prefab building up. here? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe the walkway on the inside here, it would be at grade. It wouldn't be elevated, right? right? Is it a grade there? Well, it looks like I you've mean, got parking here. It must be. You have parking there, so you'd have to. So basically, here, this the becomes uh, your your walkway here. Your building goes here. It connects to the standard system here until you do an IA, which then might be out here somewhere. I don't know. You may cause the same complaint if you move it here. Now you put parking way over here, and now you've got access back in well, this I'm direction. Just, uh, but this is an ADA. So you're making well, it's ADA out from the parking lot. Yeah, but you're making somebody from the beach who's uh, disabled now go all the way this way, all the way this right. way to get here. And what I'm saying, if you move that here, you still cause the same problem. There yeah, you it's still, it, no, it's still a long access. You, you shorten it. If you're, if you're here, it's still a long access. No, but you've got to put your handicap blocking here. Right? Is this a two ring, a, a single ring system? Or is it two, tag, two total uh, for the capacity here? Do you, do you know? I'm not sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, build, building here, the sanitary system's already Because technically here. this could be built over you put your your IA system. You can put your... With you side access to it. If you got, un, you know, if you got space under there, it, has, right. it, has it looks like you know. Is this is this striped out the whole right. way, or just then this end? That's striped down the whole way. Yeah, these it's are just all covered with sand right. in that picture. Um, mm -hmm. So you can. And this is also the drive-on access. To where's the where's beach. your handicap parking space? Oh, right that's you do have drive-on access here. Yeah. Where is right here where you are. to the beach? Right here. Drive. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but these are parking spaces here, right? So there's a row of here. The third row of parking spaces on the left. So it doesn't go all the way there. No, well, I it see lines up here. I it does. It, uh, it's covered with sand. Yeah. Yeah. Half of it. But the lines up at the if top. It ends yeah, at the here. same uh, so location the as the other lines. Yeah, it ends a little bit. If it ends right there, here. then you have it ends here. Space it looks like it's sort of oh, right. over. Here. And then this is this is the yeah. entr the entrance to beach, and, and that's open all the time, or not? typically when the bathers are on the beach? Uh, no, definitely not during the daytime hours. Um, it, it is open in the evening in the summers if there's no clover activity. Right. So yeah. sometimes it's heavily restricted. But well, well yeah. I, I mean, I think it, I, I think if you did that, right? in the event, there's a couple yeah. advantages. Probably you save like three or 400000 but you also make it much easier for <coughs> your disabled individuals to get to that bathroom. It's a, it's a shorter walk. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, they can walk right back so I, I think it's worth exploring. I mean, I hate to redesign the entire project, but you know, it's, by the time we're done, we're like at a million dollars between the IA system, between you know the parking lot, the the pavilion repairs. It's it's a lot. You know, I think you can cut that number. What about the community? The uh, com have you gotten community input? I mean, if there, you know, would there must be some things that I certainly don't know about how this is used and how people perceive the use No, we haven't it. had any community meetings okay. or anything on it. I've just spoken with um, the assistant chief lifeguard who's been there for over 40 years. So, you know, he and I discuss. Yeah, he knows better than anyone. What Where's the lifeguard station here? Right now, um, it's in the building, but it's... No, no, where are they, where's the stand on the beach? Is it here, here, or is it more than one? Um, if, yeah, there's usually two in the summer if we have the... Uh, the staffing, here and here. yeah, they're typically side. like to the sides. Because I don't know what mm -hmm. this is. That's no, like when you come is. off, it's yeah. here and here yeah. usually. Like this up. looks raised, or I don't know what that is. I mean, the club is already yeah, there. Beach, just and it's a so they beach club, so they try and they stay on. Keep on that side yeah, of it. They're not okay. too far from where this comes in. <coughs> right, but this would still be this would be leading right out to where the lifeguard stand is. Right? They both sort of are. They're in mm -hmm. that location. And okay. I know it sounds like a big price tag, but and it is. But Ponqua costs four or five times as much of this, and you're doing about one fifth of that. No, so it's, it's, it's three million. Right? Over, yeah. <coughs> That's a much bigger project. And that money's been in the park the reserve. It for was, a long but Ponqua. One of those modules yeah, is the same as, as this. So Ponquag had three of those modules and then just a much bigger deck. But the ramp, you know, is a straight on ramp down, um, two shower areas, 
We did the big deck over there. That was a big part. Right. Of that, that was a that was a big the part decking of the cost, was a big chunk. Yeah. yeah. But um, but you know it and and the understructure and once we got into it, we realized there was more to it, and we had to dedicate more funds to the project. Yeah, I mean it was certainly which much is why bigger I asked the question about the mm -hmm. underframing oh, okay. on this project. Yeah. It's just an under an underutilized beach either. Right? Okay. No. So it's heavily utilized. Right, yeah. and that's a, and I think there's a you know there is a trade benefit here for cost. I mean, I, I, I agree the cost seems high, just like to understand why it seems high. It, it may be totally just by that. I but we can, you, you know. You want to go out to bid so you get the stuff before the summer, obviously. Well, I don't think we can. Yeah, do I don't even think we could because we still need permits. Oh, okay. Um, that's why we were thinking if we waited till fall, we could just do everything at once, right. including the sanitary the system. Well, yeah. then it's, I think it's worth exploring this other option and just seeing what it does to the cost. Because if you you know if it's four hundred thousand dollars less, we could find a place to spend the other four hundred thousand dollars within <coughs> this park uh, reserve area. Because if this was here on this corner, then you'd have access that way, also access this way. I mean, way you talked about yeah, doing some of these other things in house. There's costs associated with that too. That maybe that mm -hmm. reserve fund could offset those costs, and you know, then, <coughs> you know, we wouldn't use all of our available funding. Can I ask a question? Somebody said that party. there's a private beach over to the east side. Do you mm -hmm. know how far over? Only I'm just thinking about you want your access. If the property line stops, you know, really close to that private beach, then you have this whole beach where people, you know, nobody wants to walk too far. So it's good to have the access it's kind of down the middle. It's close. It's it's really, it's, yeah. I mean, and I think that's something to take into account too, that how far people are going to have to walk down yeah, I agree. the okay. other way. Well, yep. A lot of people do access it from this parking lot. Is there's a food truck here, right? It um, it's closer to the pavilion. Yeah, you could see it in this picture here. Usually, sometimes it will go up, but this is where they're um. That's where they're they on plug the east in. side or on the. Mm -hmm. What am I looking at? That's on the west side. The west. No, the east side. Is it? That's there's on the east. The yeah, east side. side. It's on the east corner. Because right we right want here. them to plug in so that people don't hear that generator yeah. going all day. So that's typically where we want them to set up. Okay. That's, um. a, that's a good way to control it. Right, well, what, do guys, <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Well, we can, I guess, provide some cost estimates. Do you want to do it the way they presented it, or you want to have them look at some alternatives? I think not only is the alternative a cost-saving one, I think it would be better for disabled individuals. So I think it's worth exploring, personally. Well, we do have numbers from, like, the comfort stations, North Sea, and yeah. at Good Ground, so you know what you purchasing that unit for right and then it would be a matter of estimating the foundation and if you know we're doing some sort of uh, pathway along the uh, western side of the um, beach access and the cost of that and that would be it right well I'm hearing that you see this as a priority for the area the w what I'm sensing is that there's a uh, a cost consideration here because it just at, at first blush it does seem <coughs> expensive but it may be well justified if you just saw the numbers so for me I'd like just to be able to review you know your cost estimate a little bit okay and and I don't know how difficult it would be to provide some options like we're just some you know some quick blush look at and what what would happen if we did did, did those moves? Matt, yeah. if you did this walkway here, I don't see why you couldn't do uh, just concrete. Concrete, yeah. yeah. You don't right. need to do EPA. Yeah, no, we would, that's probably a walkway. Would, would it be a raised be like a walkway now? Be a sidewalk. Oh, well, cause, yeah, yeah cars parking right here and people dragging all yeah, the beach stuff. you probably have a curb stuff. or something separating the cars from the sidewalk. You might yeah. lose most of those parking stalls too because you, you know, but, you want to uh, make sure that. Why? Only because unless we are cutting it into the dune, a little bit, yeah. Because you're, you're you'll have the five foot sidewalk, but then like if a car comes, you got to push them back a few feet so that the bumper doesn't overhang the yeah, sidewalk. I mean, you just, yeah, just in this edge. I mean, you're picking up this area. Mm -hmm. You know, you res can restore this part of the dune. You're basically trading that for this. And but it's the edge here along the parking lot. So we could recoup the spaces where the existing building is now, yeah. possibly. Right, um, you might be able to pick up a few spaces. Is it yeah. on dune or is it the on? The building is on, on dune area, so you're not going to get any more spaces there. Where the it's not, it's, there's no. This would be what, three spaces at max or six? That's 
so mm. if, if you could do, do that. I guess we would demo the existing yeah. building yeah. as part of that. Well, it sounds like you kind of are. That's why I think, you know, I'm, uh, I'm reacting to the well, I car. Think, like the, I think the oh. comfort station in uh, Good Ground might have been 300 plus thousand dollars mm -hmm. for the comfort station. Mm -hmm. I mean, the we difference is if the piles here are, go are in good shape, then, you know, you carry that a new cost to... It has the new cost of the foundation. Right. You really do need to build a deck around it because the building has to be raised. So we do have to build an ADA ramp up to it, which is, you know, that's going to have cost associated with the whole, you know, it's not just setting the building on, on a set of piles. Now we've got to put something around it so people can get hmm. up to it because it can't be right. on, it's not going to be in the parking lot. It's going to be elevated. Yeah. What about runoff? I mean, where is this? This doesn't flood clearly but you do it looks like you are getting some runoff down down here that's carrying sand actually it goes yeah it's it um well it carries sand because the ocean side is higher but then this whole area is very flat is that that's from the wind probably it right? could be from the wind too the sand is trying so there's no infrastructure under here yeah, to manage water yeah is this a rain garden kind of thing here well I everything know. yeah kind of flows into this it goes into that vegetated okay, area that's, that's yeah, yeah right. there's no hard structures no i mean not unless you guys tell me <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know it's expensive because it's close to a million dollars and that's expensive but having said that i mean we looked at it's 700 square feet we looked at a 2,000 square foot building that came in at four million dollars yeah so relatively speaking it's on par with the kind of bid that it's we've been getting it's just how it is um, so it's not, I don't think it's out of the realm of what we need yeah, to be doing. And these I costs have been four to five hundred dollars a square yeah. foot. Yeah, you I know, wish it was three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's just the, the, everybody's so busy nowadays, and it's well, that's why if you do the, the if you do the prefab building, that can break it down a lot. Right. That's so what well, I, I'm that not sure because we looked at that it. for Ludlam, uh, and it turned out that, that there that was, was no savings to yeah. savings in that regard. No, so we do it. but we did do two comfort stations prefab, and they you know one came in at like three, and the other one like four. So um, we're about four yeah. fifty, four fifty. We're pushing four fifty with the building itself. So excluding the foundation so in this option. So the building itself, we estimated $550 a square foot. And we're estimating high because if we estimate low and say set aside, you know, $400,000 and then bid day comes in and, and it's $700,000, then you can't do anything. So the estimate is high, but it's based on numbers that we've seen and that we are seeing. That's consistent with square footage numbers we've been seeing yeah. in right. other, other projects. And then the electric was, so that's, 396,000. Electrics 1440 is what we estimated. Plumbing was 36, figuring with the fixtures and all the piping because all the plumbing would be the, redone. The square footage cost does not include the mechanics? Does Electric that, no, and that's plumbing? A, we're, we're doing that separate as a separate cost. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Just, you know, trying to get it. Because this being estimated under a million dollars can be bid under one contract, which you know might mm -hmm. save some money because you're not dealing with four contractors, mm -hmm. each with their mobilization and insurances and all that. But um, I, <coughs> I kind of think that the number here would be in somewhat in line with, you know, it might be a little bit more than what you s would see if we we're going to do a precast building, but you would have precast for 350 or whatever it is. Potentially a hundred thousand dollars for the foundation probably not that much, but you know it's well you get to here You get the savings of not having to do this big e pay walkway, which isn't ADA accessible anyway, right? Um, but that was that's a hundred and forty thousand is what we estimated right. out of that And it has the looking platform up here yeah. and right. you probably won't ever get this back once we lose yeah. this year. Yeah. That's probably it for okay. good. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, you know, to me, that's a big part of the beach is to have the building. It's and very, it's a very high to point to see that. Mm -hmm. Does your estimate estimate include the cupola? Yes. Okay. It's, this is a, an <coughs> ADA accessible overlook. Well, only only in as much as this comes that direction. If you put switchbacks and stuff in here, beach, this would yeah. be much more expensive. 
And this is just Could you, you got to go trade it. Off yeah. off you can refine it and it you know, try to make design decisions in the money saving you know, know, mindset. Yeah, like yeah because it's what it's it's a, what this is like 15 degrees. Whatever, so they can enter this Maybe thing. more. Like, it seems like putting having two sets of stairs here is quite an elevation to get up to this parking lot. I, I don't know the beach person. Oh, the, so yeah, it's the, the top of the dune is almost 30 feet. Yeah, and so it's, it's even more than 15 degrees. You know, it's so you're, you're plus 20 something feet to go up and over. So yeah. for a ramp, it's that's not doable. Right. Okay. It's, it I mean, even with a switchback, you couldn't you do it. You think about Hot Dog Beach, the Hot Dog Beach ramp. We had to go 12 feet, and that was nine switchbacks Switch, yeah. to go right. to get to that platform. This dune is significantly higher than over at Hot Dog, so it and just at that kind of at that kind of elevation and, and angle, uh, you know, if you're in a wheelchair, I'm not entirely sure you you know you you want to be doing that in order no. to make that compliant. You have to. No, you would, you would have to. How do you do that? Spend half your day. It's not, a it's not CPF, yeah. right? Acquired beach. This is pre-CPF. Correct. Oh yeah. So the CPF can't be used to build the walkway there. Um, well, I, you know, just one voice, but I'm, I'm thinking that we should at least explore that idea and just look at the cost differential. Okay. Um, and then make an informed decision. Yeah, I don't disagree. Time. I mean, if we have time to do that, just so we can get a better sense of, of it. Option A, option B. Okay. Yes. You know, there might be some, uh, you know, things that uh, crop up in this when when Matt looks at it this way that are add to the cost that unanticipated. Yeah, I mean, just understand though, you're looking at you know, just looking at something like that <laughs> from here to there. It's you know, you don't see it from the aerial, but that's exactly. that's a pretty steep uh, incline. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. C if you could work up some numbers, doing it with a prefab building in this location with the sidewalk. Along the parking lot edge, and as far as the boardwalk over the dune, um, could you uh, give it to us with saving the boardwalk and, and also eliminating it? Okay, I, I'd li like to save it, we'll even if it is another entrance to the beach. For sure, I like that others. idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, how bad is that boardwalk? Suggest that. Is that walk like? It's it's very narrow. Very um, narrow. You two these are the stairs. Going up to it, it's they're like well, it's an okay shape though. It's, it's, it's really not, and it currently no. ends is about halfway <laughs> up. Like so um, um, yeah. One thing that yeah. the guard who's been yeah. there for 40 it's years, um, that's one thing he said is that if there's any way to make it wider, that would yeah. be great. But um, he said if there was some kind of platform, because people do like to stand mm -hmm. at the top and look out yeah. over the the 360 yeah. and that's why this little viewing platform was mm -hmm. put in okay so the elevation is almost like a plateau it, it yeah. comes yeah. out yeah. pretty it's flat and then at there's the an even steeper incline at the, the around the building from here to here, from here, to here. here. you yeah. see this is a big right off of the if you do this with ipe if you leave right it off of the building there's two sets of stairs so you right. bring in people so that's a couple of feet there and a couple Right. Are these I'm just curious as to why the platform was so way out here. Like yeah. The platform is there because that's the highest. The highest right. That's what I'm asking. So yeah. this is coming down, but it's yeah. this is still the highest. And I could email. I have. We, yeah, we did could I see that? that yeah, I actually visual. went through right. the whole could thing. So, this so we could platform. visually yeah, see exactly the top of where. Maybe do this out of the track or something. Out of that. Great. Thank you for the work. Just go explore options. Yeah. Yeah. To cost it out for a tracks thing. So if we moved it here and you could keep both the sidewalk and the ability to walk over. You'd have two axes. Or leave this the way yeah. it is and just build the platform out of the same materials as or tracks. Or We're not under a crunch. Just, just try to approach it with the most cost savings as possible. Yes, okay, understood. All mm -hmm. right. Thank you. That's what I think what we're looking for. Not that we don't have the availability of funds, but it could be other projects no, it's that we could use those funds I for. I understand, too. Purchase. It's just unfortunate that the time, with everybody being so busy and numbers coming in on all different types of construction, yeah. where we you understand like, the it's cost crazy. of construction. Yeah, we're, we're faced with that across the board. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little shocking, a little right. sticker shock. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This is good. Yes. <laughs> Say hi to you. Thanks, Kristen. Hi, Nally. Yes. Um, all right. Should we do uh, agenda? Okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.
draft agenda for the November 26th. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. For the November 26th meeting, this is going to be an evening meeting. Uh, I, it's not, it's not going to be in the town hall. Oh, auditorium, main level? Oh, the main yeah, level. Evening. Okay, evening. it's not going to be here then? We're going to be up there? In the auditorium. In the auditorium. Oh. In the auditorium. Okay, so that is correct. All right. Town Hall Auditorium, main level. All right, so that room's ready for us? Oh, yeah. Yes. We had a meeting. The con 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 board and planet was going to work in there. Zoning board. Last night. Okay. And uh, let's see what we have. Public hearings. We got two of them. You're going to have those lights. No, no you're not going to have them? No, you don't have that. Oh, okay. oh that's good. It's really dark. I don't need my, my sun glasses. All right, so, so two public hearings. <laughs> The first, the first one is uh, on the possible acquisition of lands of Robinson in Shinnecock Hills. And the second one is considering amending Chapter 140, Community Preservation Fund of the Town of, of the Southampton Town <laughs> Code to update the Town of Southampton Community Preservation Project Plan. And then we go to resolutions 10 12 is the first. It's uh, adopting, amending Chapter 140. So that's based on the public hearing of the uh, Community Preservation Project Plan. And 1105 authorizes transfer of lands so from Suffolk County Riverside and amends the CPF management and stewardship plan to include that property. That's the one we held off on, right? Mm -hmm. Of the transfers. Do we remember why we were holding on? I think that we wanted Kyle maybe to check yeah. to see if it was something. So whether water quality? Water. Yeah, yeah, water quality would purchase it or not whether it made sense to oh that's the one right. adjacent on the to the river woods right. yeah right we wanted to know whether that should be done as maybe a pocket park or something playground gazebo that kind of thing that could benefit everybody but in particular the Lewis river woods community uh three two nine seven two authorizes the supervisor to sign 2020 contract extension for stop program hazardous household hazardous waste removal with Radia Research Corporation. ID 32965 authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract extension for Baycrest Avenue Access Project. ID 32934 authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract extension with Mercury Marine for Mercury Marine Parks. Parts. 32929 is an authoriza authorization for the supervisor to sign a contract extension for embroidered and silk screen clothing with J and G Awards in Sports and New York State Industries to the Disabled Sport. Well, 32928 authorizes the supervisor to sign contract extensions for dry cleaning and laundry services for police department for east of the canal with Southampton Village Cleaners and Watermill Village Cleaners. 32927 authorizes the supervisor to sign contract extensions for dry cleaning and laundry services for police department for west of the canal with Good Ground Cleaners, Inc. and Quality Care Cleaners. 32978 authorizes the supervisor to sign contract extensions for hardware and various items for pickup. 32973 authorizes the supervisor to sign contract extensions for street sweeper parts and gutter brooms with Local Equipment Incorporated, Malbees in, uh, Equipment Incorporated, Company Incorporated, Old Dominion Brush Company, Basso Bas Systems, and North East sweepers and rentals. 32967 authorizes the supervisor to execute a 2019 contract extension with Delta Well and Pump Company Incorporated for district wide well and well pump maintenance and repair at the Hampton Bays Water District. Resolution 32986, I have a substitution. Which That's is a deep ID 32997. And that is going to be an authorization for the supervisor to execute a 2019 license agreement with St. Joseph's College for use of the Dancy Athletic Center for lifeguard training and sign a facility use agreement with Suffolk County Community College for use of the new swimming pool. It's the same title, but I guess the resolution has changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as 
Sean is saying we might come back if the um, QB diver team can use it as well. Yeah, I think there's going to be a series of, of, uh, of our, our municipal departments that may want to use that. So. We use which? This is the well, this is from St. Joseph's College. St. Joseph, why aren't we using the we, we are. We have, yeah, we have, uh, there's some others. The dive team potentially can use it um, to do training. There, there's so some others. Nice. It's it's nice. It is it's great. Nice. I'm there I'm there a lot. <laughs> it's nice. That's great. 32932, authorized the supervisor to sign it. Supervisor, I'm sorry, to execute a contract extension with Quasi Claire for supply number two fuel oil service and repair. 32974, authorize the supervisor to execute a contract extension with Remy Wisnowski Incorporated for farming at Sarah Field, Suffolk County tax map number 0900-69-2-13.5. 3 ID 32988, authorize the supervisor to execute a contract with Johnson Electrical Corp to maintain and repair traffic signals within the town. 32983. Three <coughs> authorizes the supervisor to execute a 2020 fire protection and 2020 fire protection contracts with the village of Quag for the North End Quag Fire Protection District 32985. Authorizes the supervisor to execute the 2020 fire protection contracts with the village of Sag Harbor for the Noyak and Bay Point Fire Protection Districts 32872. Authorizes the supervisor to sign a 2020 agreement with Unistat Services. Uh, 32990 authorizes the supervisor to sign extensions with Hampton Hopper and Hampton Jitney for South Fork Community Connection. 32935 awards and authorizes the supervisor to sign contract with Fisher Signs and Shirts LLC for vehicle graphics. 32991 uh, award and authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract for printing and mailing of the Hampton Bay's Water District bills with Questmark Information Management Incorporated. 32930, declaring items, declare items surplus and authorized disposal. Uh, 32987, recall and amend 2019-914, purchase of furniture. Town Board Resolution ID 32981, co-sponsored with the supervisor to recall and amend Town Board Resolution 218-1186 with Toxic Targeting Incorporated. 32982. Recall and rescind resolution 2019-1074, authorize the supervisor to execute a contract extension with T. Minna Supply. 32964, amends 2019, adopt the budget for various departments. 32933, amends 19 through 23, capital budget for Hampton Bay's Water District, infrastructure updates. 32970, amends 19 through 23, capital budget for Tonquad Bridge. Uh -huh. 32975, authorize the payment of Roadwork Construction Corp for emergency work on behalf of the Hampton Bays Water District. I just wanted to say that Fun Park Bridge really should be the old bridge. No. Yes, it confused me. Did it? Well, not really, but. <laughs> It, it's well, just sort of. It's well, it should be an old bridge or peat pump up here. Pier. Can we can we fix that? Somebody on Pier. Three two nine seven zero. Old Pier. 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 Old just put in the word old before Pond Club. Okay. Um, good old Pond Club. So 32980, resolution to establish restricted account prediction and recovery, recovery social events. 32962, authorize town attorney to reimburse NIMA for claims paid in the second half of 2018. 32957. Contains Devitt Spellman Barrett LLP as it relates to building the farm LLC versus Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to of the South, town of Southampton at Al 32824 accepts retirement of James Raycroft, maintenance mechanic four in parts. 32908 authorizes amendments to the town's 401A special uh, pay plan. 
ID 32909 and notice a public hearing to consider amending Town Code Chapter 285 Stormwater Management and Erosion, Erosion Sediment Control to address inspection and maintenance requirements. Town Board Resolution ID 32971, notice of public hearing to consider a request or amendment to Community Preservation Fund Water Quality Improvement 2019 funding award for construction costs related to the village of West Hampton Beach connection to sewage treatment plant at the Bresky Airport. 32949, notice of public hearing to consider amending Town Code Chapter 178, East Quad Public Drinking Water Infrastructure Improvement Plan to clarify eligibility criteria and expand the rebate claim period for certain parcels. Uh, 32969, notice public hearing to consider the construction of a new ambulance facility in the Southampton Ambulance District pursuant to Town Law 202B. 32747 authorizes acquisition of lands of Robinson. Shinnecock Hills and amends the CPF management and stewardship plan to include that property. So that, of course, is uh, subject to that public hearing. Town Board Resolution ID 32905, Road Review Application for 18 Fairway Court LLC 0900-021.00-01.00-01.009, situate in Noyak, is accepted. Town Board Resolution 32903. Road review application for Ruben Gutierrez. I'll skip the tax map number. Situated Hampton Bays is accepted. And there's one other in the separate packet, Town Board Resolution 32995. Uh, authorizes the continued advertising and marketing campaign for the South Fork commuter connection. That's it. Uh, any questions about any of those? All right, Cindy. You're free to publish. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again sometime. Uh, let's see what we have for updates. I, I guess I should probably start with Dean Rilly. I need, you know, hopefully today I'll get out there and take a look. So we had another issue with Dune Road. Um, I don't even remember now. What's, the, what's today? Thursday? I think on Monday morning? Speaking of um, We were losing that berm. Uh, it, it had been getting chewed away by, by the tides. It was down to very little. Um, the first step was a uh, highway went out there and uh, put some we had that stockpile of sand that was brought out there, and some of that was added to the berm before high tide. Um, high tide came and not only took that away, took it all away. Um, so by the end of high tide, there was a literally a 200 foot wide opening um, in front of the uh, commercial dock area, and about three feet of sand in the road. Um, so uh, we did, you know, have, obviously have to close the road. And, um, a highway was able to then, as the, the water receded, push the sand that was in the road back up and sort of put together a berm again uh, in preparation for the next high tide. Uh, the county came out, they take a, took a look, and we, you know, somewhere around 6, 7 o'clock that night, we felt like there was enough of a berm to withstand the incoming high tide, which we thought would be a little bit less than the earlier high tide. Uh, it did suffer quite a bit of damage, but it, it held back uh, you know, any additional damage to Dune Road. So we you know, were able to avoid that breach situation. And, uh, and then, once again, the next morning, they came and they put that back. Meanwhile, the county uh, got their dredge up and running again, and they put the dredge pipe right into that area in front of the commercial dock and they are uh, building up and uh, we had lost a tremendous amount of the sand that they had stockpiled uh, about half of what they had uh, accumulated got washed out in these uh, mini I don't even know if they were storm events they were just energetic high tides so uh, they're working feverishly in that area the road is open now there's no more emergency order um, they are 
putting sand into that area. There is some more inclement weather on the way. Um, I did send a letter, well, I've been in contact with uh, Congressman Zeldin's office, as has uh, Councilwoman Scalera. Um, I sent a letter to the state, uh, really uh, pleading for federal, state and federal assistance here, because we can't keep trying to prevent a breach in this way. We just simply don't have the resources, we don't have the equipment, we don't have the stockpiles of sand. Um, we can, uh, we're doing the best we can, and I, I think we've done a good job in preventing a breach. A breach would be catastrophic. We'd lose Dune Road, we'd leave several businesses uh, inaccessible, we'd probably have tremendous damage to the commercial dock and the fish packing business next door. So I think the efforts we have done so far have been able to prevent a breach. And once a breach forms, it can grow very quickly. It can grow very quickly. So uh, we don't want that situation. But I don't know that we have the ability, if there is a, a more major storm event, to hold it back. So I'm really imploring the, the state. I talked to Governor Cuomo directly about this yesterday on the, on the phone. Uh, he's fully aware of the situation. He is reviewing it and trying to see what kind of assistance the state can, uh, can supply. The county executive is fully aware of this situation. Um, and uh, I know uh, Congressman Zeldin is now aware as well. Yeah, from what I understand, that he made, as he expl they explained, they, um, the federal government is looking at it. They've started this process where they come down and look at it, and they have 30 days to make this decision whether or not it fits within the federal mission. Um, and then if the cost outweighs the benefit, and I know that you have been doing, we've been doing everything that we can do from the town level, but it really is up to the state um, and the county even to push for this and, and us keeping the pressure on them is really right. uh, and And they have been. I, you know, I t talking with Legislator Fleming, they've been putting a lot of pressure also with the state. Um, uh, Senator Schumer's office is, has been getting a, a, a lot of calls as well. So it's actually it's gratifying to see all these levels of government working pretty well together. Mm -hmm. um, but the immediacy is clear, yeah. you know, and that's, that's the worry. The 30-day so, you know, time period is, is a little scary. This uh, a, I just want to say this has been a long time in coming. So I think in 1938, Hurricane opened up the Shinnecock Inlet. It was then stabilized with, with uh, jetties. I think at one point they were extended, at least the, uh, the eastern jetty. And the sand no longer moves along the beach. So if you go out to the end of Meadow Lane, to the county park there, you'll see an enormous beach, an enormous beach. That sand isn't making it mm -hmm. to Hampton Bays. And there's a scouring effect digging yeah, out on the west side. So our area in Hampton Bays, west of the west jetty, is completely sandstorm. Some of the sand ends up in the inlet itself. And FIMP, which was started literally almost 60 years ago, They've been, they've understood this issue for a very long time. I've looked at the aerials and you can see, you know, every year it gets a little bit worse. So you have minor periods after they dredge the inlet where it gets built up again and then it, begin, it goes back and it recedes. Um, we're just now at the point where the, it's, the waves are up to the road. Um, we're out of time and there is a plan that it was understood under FIMP and this WOSI, the west of Shinnecock Inlet, component is that they would periodically dredge not only the inlet but offshore borrow areas every three or four years and place it right there right where we're having the problem hundreds of thousands of yards and um, it's my understanding that was funded and uh, maybe that's incorrect but I thought that the super soft sandy money was going to be used to to fund FIMP and uh, I don't know really what the delay is other than they've started FIMP They've started areas. They have two dredges on Long Island. I think in one is in West Hampton, one may be off Fire Island. Um, and if we could just simply get one of those ocean dredges repositioned to do this project, that is a federal project. It's been a, um, a contemplated project to just get it here. Um, if we could get, you know, the 800,000 cubic yards or more now that's anticipated from that project, we will be okay. And those offshore bars. We'll be okay for 20 years if they do that. I think that's part of the 30 day process. And those offshore bars, though, are going to, if, if we're losing sand from the beach, they're going out there, that's going to be a problem for the fishermen yes. as well. 
Well, and that's a federal inlet, as you know, Julie. So that's because of the Coast Guard station, and they they have to keep that inlet open for Coast Guard purposes as well as the commercial fishermen, and they have always done that. We we need that dredging project. I just worry about all the sand that was just put there and now is somewhere else. And yeah, I think it's it moves. I think it's, it's to the west. west. Yeah. And some of it will, I th hopefully, will get pushed in. We have a lot of sand at Pontquad Point near our pavilion. Um, and that's something we're going to have to possibly look at is taking some of that sand and pushing it back down the beach. Um, but, we, you know, we'd have to get permits to do that. But that could be a, a temporary measure. But, we, you know, all these little things, they, they buy us a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. But the bigger solution... And it's not just there. We have places that, that, that are undermined all, all along our south shore, you know, right to Meridges and Lenton, certainly east, uh, west of that. So there's small degradations that are going on, but they're indicators of, of, of the much larger problems. I totally agree with you. Without FIMP, you know, getting in place as soon as possible, we're... We're, we're fighting really Mother Nature, and it's, in a way, an exercise in futility. We're putting this loose sand, you know, a few feet of it, in front of this raging ocean. It's like it's like building a sand castle and watching, yeah, <laughs> but watch, watching right. it get washed away. It's not going to, you know, we're doing the best we can with what we've got. And I have reached out to Cornell, and they're interested in helping whenever we can. Do have the chance to finally do some plantings there? Oh, um, good. They're willing to. Help. Yeah, to stabilize the dunes. Yeah, right, compact and right now there's no point. Right. Yeah. There's no point. It's it's all get, gets washed away with the next, you know, energetic high tide. The so, thirty uh, the thirty day response that was from the Army Corps of Engineers through Zeldin, uh, Congressman Zeldin's yeah, office. Yeah, uh, my understanding is they were down there two days ago. I think it was Tuesday, so two or three days, maybe Monday. Even. It was it was this week within a couple of days. So then the, that period runs from I guess the time they were down there to make that assessment. Now, if there is a breach, um, it does then trigger the breach contingency plan. Um, there'll be you know more resources made available. Um, we just don't want to see that breach. No. That'll cost more. Oh, no. And in terms of funding, so much more. You, you can tell me that I maybe better know this. I, I was told something that the governor's office is trying to extend the state of emergency from October to cover this time period so that that will help with some making more funding accessible for anything we potentially do. Oh, well, good. Ultimately. <coughs> so as I hear more, I'll keep you guys in the loop um, in terms of uh, assistance from other levels of government. Um, you know, and you know, the governor it is, you know, Kevin McAllister was here the other day. It's true that the governor is interested in helping us improve water quality in Shinnecock Bay. What form that may take is completely unknown at this point. They're, all they're doing simply is looking at different ways in the western portion to help get uh, cleaner water into that area. So, uh, you know, as I hear more. I'll let you guys know there too, but there is no particular project at this point. No, they we're doing feasibility work right now. They're yeah, just looking at how we could address it, if there is a way to address it, and if it's, you know, what the environmental concerns might be, what the cost factors would be. Um, but the governor has taken a keen interest. Um, this actually started when he was out looking at Lake Agawam here, and I, and I mentioned to the governor, we also have an issue in the western portion of Shinnecock Bay, areas like Quantuck Bay, and uh, Wisa Creek and Tiana Bay, where the water quality uh, is seriously impaired and because we don't have that flushing. And is there a way we can do that? I felt that that was beyond our means as well, financially. And, uh, the state is taking a look at it, and I, I do appreciate the governor's interest in it. Um, all right, um, other things to update you on? I guess we're back in... <laughs> Back in the same area of Hampton Bays with the uh, old Pon Ponquag Bridge, uh, we have uh, received a uh, an award. Um, I should say uh, L.K. McLean Associates uh, has won a 2020 Engineering Excellence Award from the American Council of Engineering Companies in New York related to the design of the renovated Ponquag uh, piers. So. Uh, Congratulations! We should have probably congratulated yeah. them <laughs> when Matt <laughs> was here. when Matt was here. Um, but also to Christine Fenton, our town engineer. This is a big honor. Uh, she was heavily involved in the design of that project. Um, um, they uh, won a platinum award in the special projects category. 
So uh, it reinforces the hard work that was done by everyone. Uh, and uh, we should also, uh, I guess, congratulate the town trustees who assisted uh, with that project as well. And uh, the engineers will be picking up the award at a ceremony in April. Uh, tree lighting and menorah ceremony at Good Ground Park, Friday, December 6th. Uh, 3.30 to 5. Uh, they'll have uh, Dickens carolers there. And uh, the Grinch, I guess, will be making an appearance. No. Uh, we'll be there for pictures <laughs> uh, with the kids' hot chocolate donated by Hampton's Coffee and cookies, <laughs> I, cookies donated by Creed's Bakery. I can't believe we're already announcing holiday lightings and things like that. Uh, uh, Thanksgiving is the next one, right? Uh, we are planning a safe New Year's Eve. Wow, we're really getting ahead of ourselves. We're planning a safe New Year's Eve party called Clear Vision 2020 by the Addiction and Recovery Committee at Parish Hall at Southampton Stony Brook Hospital. And uh, we, oh, I guess that was on the agenda. There was something about that too. So uh, they'll have light food and soft drinks, a DJ, casual dress. Or, or creative black tie. What do you got, Connie? Some flyers. Oh, flyers oh, for this. Yeah. What is creative black tie? You so could wear jeans with a black tie, or you could get dressed up. All right. Be creative. All right. Uh, there are several Tuxedo. sponsors, uh, including our town celebration fund, the police department, <coughs> Southampton Business Alliance. Uh, that helps keep the tickets affordable. It's twenty-five dollars per person, <coughs> and uh, anyone who would like to celebrate the new year without alcohol or drugs, anyone of any age group, young people, twenty-somethings, thirty-somethings, forty-somethings—that's what it's. I'm just rating here. No age limit. Uh, this is not just for people in recovery. This is a social event for anyone who does not want to drink or do drugs. Uh, this was something that was recommended by our Opioid Addiction Task Force to offer people alternative places to socialize. Uh, the hospital graciously uh, stepped up and offered Parish Hall for free <coughs> because of their commitment to make this a drug-free community. Tickets are available through our Youth Bureau. Uh, more information available on our website. All right, so that's kind of cool. I know uh, other communities do these... Uh, New Year's Eve, what are they, first night first they call night. them, you know, alcohol free. So this is sort of our version of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a New Year's celebration. It's affordable, $25, mm -hmm. and alcohol free. So that sounds fun. All right, uh, other updates? Anyone want to jump in here? Well, we have a small business Saturday, uh, December 7th, and that's uh, I'm particularly trying to make a plug for West Hampton Beach again to help our vendors who are really working well with trying to uh, weather weather the uh, uh, the construction on Main Street there and, and so far so good so just point that that we have that coming up on in December. And we have our, uh, parade of lights in the uh, Southampton Village this Saturday after Thanksgiving not this Saturday Saturday after Thanksgiving the 30th. Um, so that's always a huge event, draws a lot of people, a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Nothing at this time. Let me, there was one other thing I could mention. We also, I also had, a, we're part of the Shared Services Consortium. And we do this, uh, I guess, twice a year, these adoption of the shared services plan it's very involved and the county executive team has been doing a great job it was in my office the other day we had a, a number of other um, heads of various uh, municipal governments you know village mayors mayor moore mayor um, okay um, you know various other elected officials and we vote on the shared services plan the 2020 uh, shared services plan and, uh, so far, the county, I think, there's been at least $20 million in reported savings through sharing services, which is uh, significant. So that translates to savings to our taxpayers as well. So uh, it's a good thing. So we have the new plan now for 2020 adopted. So 
Uh, that's all I have. Anybody else with anything? Alright, um... Executive session? Land acquisition? Uh, personnel? And, uh, I'll just, just again, too, I sent the letter yesterday pleading for assistance from state and federal. Uh, so uh, you all should have got a copy of that letter. Uh, if you haven't read it, take a look at it. It sort of details what's been going on on Dune Road. Um, it's not the only area, though, that's experiencing erosion. Uh, Quad Village has been hit pretty hard. The Village Beach over there, uh, Brown Dune. Um, so there are other areas. Uh, Pikes Beach has uh, seen some erosion as well. That's part of a federal project. So, uh, but the, the most severe seems to be at the, you know, the east end of Dune Road in the Hampton Base area. All right, so I will make a motion to end our work session and go into executive session on acquisitions of personnel. Second. Seconded by Councilman Scrivoni. All in favor? Aye. Aye.